So let's get into business here. I've uh, silenced Ron's mic and I've made sure to hang up on Dwight. So it's just us guys, as far as I know. So act two, I have a couple songs here that I always have. I have um, Forever Young by Bob Dylan and Float On by Modest Mouse. And that song came out, I think, uh, in the spring of my senior year. So that's always something that's kind of nice. And it always fits. But there are five songs in Act Two because it's called The Long Middle in, uh, in film. Because it's the most difficult part to write because it's the most difficult part to live out, actually. This is the process, remember the monomyth, when you go into the unknown. Uh, in many cases, for many people, the world of the known is oh, being aware of darkness, but the feeling you can't get out of it. So going into the unknown, there's a sense of victory in the beginning, but you realize, oh crap, this battle is going to be way more difficult. And if you give up once you start battling, then you're worse off than you were before, but you definitely don't want to go back to the way you were before or be worse than that. So the only thing to do is to persevere. So all of these virtues like uh, courage and wisdom and justice, uh, temperance, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, discipline, all of these things are required. And we realize once we actually start how little of them we have, we're resting on the laurels of maybe a good upbringing of uh, just you know making good grades and not being bad as other people means we're good. No, it doesn't. It does not mean that we're good. Uh, going through this second part of the monomyth, going through the unknown, that tests us. That's that first part. T you test, you realize who your allies are, who your enemies are. And oftentimes we're our own worst enemy. This first song, I, I want to emphasize how is it that you get through the unknown, the, the chaos? How do you go through this? And this is Sigh No More by Mumford and & Sons. And this song is about love. And I'm not talking about, whenever people hear the word, they think of romantic love. They think about feeling and emotion. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the kind of love where you would die for the world even if the world were filled with enemies, which is the greatest form of love. Uh, and there's also to die for a friend, to die for others. But not only to die, to live for others. I'm not talking about the sense where you lose your own identity. I'm talking about where in loving others, we realize who we are. Um, all of the mysteries of life are unveiled. If, you're, if your aim at life is to be happy, oftentimes the people with that aim are, are not happy. I have to disagree firmly with our entire culture and world that happiness is the goal of life. Uh, I don't think so at all. I think people who try to attain happiness often do it through means that are only self-seeking, and they're losing the mystery of human communion. They're losing the mystery of love. And uh, the thing is, love is the most difficult thing in the world to, to act out. It's easy for people we have fond feelings for, but again, if we only base our lives upon our, on our feelings, then that goes back to living by instinct, living as animals. But it's difficult to love people who are unlovable. But as Chesterton said, There's the great lesson of beauty and the beast, that a thing must be loved before it is lovable. So we have to enter a world, that same world from, the, from Act 1, the world of darkness, the world of self-seeking, of self-interest, the world of instinct, the world of merely seeking pleasure, the brave new world, 1984, Lord of the Flies, the individual internal world of Frankenstein, the monster, and all this. We have to enter into that world and love that which is unlovable. And then all of the mysteries are unveiled. And also the difficult mysteries, <laughs> the mystery of evil. Yeah, we start to see that more clearly when we actually try to battle against it, the evil within ourselves and the evil within the world. And this love is the thing that, or love is the, the action and the relation that is what life is actually for. People ask me, what is the meaning or purpose of life? It is to love and be loved. Because uh, that is relationship that fulfills. Okay, that's what love is. It's relationship that is trying to fulfill the other, and in doing so, fulfills the self. Uh, there's a self-love quality, a love of friend, a romantic love, familial love, affection for things like pets and people and places, and agape, which is the love where we empty ourselves for the sake of the blessedness of the other. Right. And, and that is the one, the, and that is the true love that undergirds all of the other ones and gives them purpose and meaning. So uh, 
that that is the thing that we need at the beginning of Act Two to let us know no matter where we go, no matter what we do, no matter what happiness we seek. And I hope I hope you all do find happiness, but ultimately, um, I hope the happiness you realize pales in comparison to a life that is energized with loving others and, and you cannot forget to allow others to love you uh, or otherwise your steam's only going to go so far. So, um, okay, so that, long introduction for that song. Let me move on a little more quickly for these others. Forever Young, I always have this one in here by Bob Dylan. It is a, a message from me to you all. Beautiful lyrics, just listen to it. You'll get it. And the next one is, you've never heard of this guy named Josh Garrels, a great songwriter. And uh, the song's called Bread and Wine. And as it should trigger that archetype alarm, bread and wine dealing with communion. And that's what this song is about. It's about the communion of friends. This is a guy talking to his closest friends. And uh, I hope that you have some of your best friends, maybe friends that you've lost along the way, you people you used to be friends with and aren't much anymore. A lot of those memories kind of flood back to us at, at transitional coming of age times like this. Uh, friends that you have now who you're close to, maybe ones you've drifted away from or there's been a break and a breach in the friendship. Um, and definitely those friends who you haven't made yet who are going to become the best friends you've ever had before. Uh, my two closest friends, I didn't, uh, I didn't know them until college. So uh, in thinking about friendship and, and these, this particular type of relationship, these are the, remember the, the allies portion of the monomyth. They're the ones who help you get through. That, that's your band. Your, this is your band of fellowship and the bond of fellowship, your band of brothers or sisters to help get you through, especially whenever your family's not around to assist you in that. Or in some cases, people didn't have that type of family to get them through it, so all they've got are these friends who are, who are as close as family to them. And the, the next song is Float On by Modest Mouse, uh, indie band here. And this is about just persevering, that life tends to happen and causes, throws things at us and our ability to adapt and float through, but uh, hopefully float intentionally. I don't like the idea of floating through life, just being caught in the current wherever it takes you. But the sense of as you're floating, uh, maneuvering, and uh, all this song is ultimately saying uh, that all will end well. And when we're in our moments of great anxiety and stress, all will end well. As uh, Julian of Norwich said, all shall be well, all manner of things shall be well. And the uh, last one is an instrumental called Untitled Three. I cannot listen to this song very frequently because it takes a lot of emotion out of me. It's a powerful, beautiful song that uh, you can't help but be flooded with memories whenever you hear it. And uh, some of the sweetest, most beautiful memories that you've had, some of the saddest thinking that for some reason this song reminds me of people I've lost. Um, you know, not way back in the past, um, my father thinking about people I'll lose in the future. People are gonna lose me. And uh, that is not merely a sad thing to contemplate. Sometimes it can be precious to recall and to hold dear uh, the memories of those who, who, who loved us and who we loved. And get, getting there, they're gonna bring us back to that ultimate gravity uh, of, life's, of life's meaning. And we don't need to neglect think, thinking of them and also thinking of those we still have and those who still have us. So that is act two.